Hey everybody. That's all. Greetings. Good night, Mike. <laughs> no. You came back. Hello, YouTube. So I'm having a little difficulty trying to figure out how I'm supposed to introduce these videos. If I'm supposed to come in and just be like, hey, how are you doing? I don't know. So, hello. It's nice to have you here on this channel. I need to come clean with you guys. On the last video, I may have given a, a small, a very small amount of misinformation. See, I told you that I was a pastor. And that's not entirely inaccurate. I am a pastor. I'm an associate pastor. My, I have an, a long official title. Uh, I am the associate pastor of evangelism and discipleship. Or, or is it discipleship and evangelism? So, I'm always trying to, to look at the Bible and try to understand what evangelism is, what discipleship is. I'm always trying to, to, to know how to implement those things within our church. So, if you're like me, this idea of evangelism has, has been uh, something that, that um, it generally goes like this. Can I tell you about Jesus? No. For a long time, I thought that's what evangelism was. I thought that all you had to do was go knock on doors and, and ask people if they were Christians and if they wanted to know about Jesus. and. It turns out the only people that really do that effectively are the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons. You know, con congratulations to those guys for making that a really creepy thing and now people just kind of don't open their doors anymore. There's not a lot of people that are willing to just let a stranger into their house and talk about this kind of stuff. I don't blame you. you know, there are some you know, programs that were mildly successful, uh, and you know, some churches had great success with these programs. Some didn't, uh, like the uh, the faith evangelism strategy. Uh, there was one at one time called the Net, but they were all you know knocking on doors, you know, hoping that a family was going to let you in their house and, and that, that you'd be able to have some sort of conversation with them. We hold events at, at churches, and it, we expect. People to come to these events, they come to the events, they get the free food, they uh, sign up for, for the program, you get their name and their number, and then when you go to call that number later, uh, it turns out that, that they gave you a fake number and they just wanted your free food. People, we pass out tracts uh, and we expect a little piece of paper to, to lead these people to Jesus. Um, top evangelism strategy of 90% of Christians, I would dare say. Let's invite them to church. We'll invite them to church, and we'll let the pastor be responsible for evangelizing and teaching the people about Jesus, because I might screw something up if I say anything about Jesus. Come on now, be honest. You know that's true. Sometimes we're expected just to walk up to people and just start a conversation about Jesus. Cold turkey. I am the world's worst at starting a conversation. I'm kind of shy. Not good at icebreakers. Awful. Terrible! So I think the thing we want to know is how did Jesus start the conversation? How was he sharing the gospel? How was he evangelizing people? That's all I want to know. I, I think that's a valid question. And I spent some time looking through the Bible trying to, to see how Jesus did the things he did. And so the first thing we know 
that Jesus had disciples. Now, we're not going to talk about discipleship today. That We'll save that for another day. Jesus picks these 12 guys that he wants to teach. He spends time with them away from the crowds of people because these are the people that are going to be following him. These are the people that are going to be closest to him. He, he spends a little extra time with these guys. He, he chose these disciples that he wanted. He goes to them. He, he does the door knocking you know, move on them. He goes to them where they're at. We also see Jesus speaking to large groups of people. You know, we churches, we've got this part down. How do I know? Because we have massive churches that meet every Sunday morning. We've got the whole big crowd thing down pat, I think. It, you know, anyway, it, of course, some churches don't have very big crowds. But then there's those times when he has personal encounters with individuals. And this is the kind of thing we're talking about here. This is what 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 evangelism you know when we think of evangelism we think of this one-on-one -on -one kind of thing as i have looked through uh, the gospels and and tried to understand how jesus approached these one-on-one -on -one scenarios i found two very peculiar things number one is that there were a lot of people who came to jesus they came to him now granted they came to him on two premises uh number one they wanted something now, we see these people, uh, you know, at the, the, the feeding of the, the 5,000, 4,000, they wanted food. We see people come to Jesus wanting healing. Uh, we see people come to Jesus wanting, uh, you, know, you know, some sort of uh, physical relief from physical ailments that they have. We see people bringing people to Jesus. Uh, and for instance, the, the men who, who bring the paralytic to Jesus. Uh, you know, we see all these different occasions where people come to Jesus because they want something. And, and, and you know, in many cases, that, that thing that they want is, is some sort of physical need. On the flip side of that coin, we see people come to Jesus and they have some deeper questions. This guy comes to Jesus and he asks a very simple, honest question. What must I do to be saved? He comes to Jesus because he feels like Jesus has those kind of answers. And so, you know, we see these instances come up where the people actually come to Jesus with a, a genuine concern. Jesus answers their question. That's one instance. That, that, that's, that's what we see, people coming to Jesus. But then there's a second thing. We see Jesus encountering specific people. Now, we see this happen a lot in the Gospel of John. Number one is in John chapter 4, and it's the, the story that, that many of us know about Jesus' interaction with the woman at the well. And Jesus was thirsty, and he asked a lady for some water. Jesus asks this question, and it winds up you know, opening the door for this whole nother a whole other thing about we worship in this place, you worship in this place, you're a man, I'm a woman, you have many husbands, and you know, da 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 blah, 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 blah. What happened was a very, you know, general question opened the door for a whole host of other things. Example number two, John chapter five. You've got this lame man. Jesus encounters this man. The man hasn't asked him for anything. The man hasn't uh, sought him out for anything. He hasn't summoned him to come to Bethesda in any means. Jesus sees this man. He sees his need and he acts on the need. He asks him, he says, do you want to be healed? Uh, of course I want to be healed, but I can't get in the pool. So, you know, Jesus, you know, does his little thing, heals the man, says, take up your pallet and walk. In each of these cases, Jesus is just doing his commonplace activities. He's walking. He's stopping to rest. He's taking a break from the things that he normally does. He sees people in the need. He addresses the need. So, what do we learn from this? You know, what, what do we see about evangelism through the life of Jesus? I think the two things that, we, that I see in this is that Jesus lived a life that was outrageous, different. It was not like anybody else's life. And it drew people's attention to him. They wanted to see what Jesus had to say. They wanted to know what Jesus knew. They wanted to have what Jesus had. In our Christian lives, are we attracting people to us because Christ lives within us? It's a good question. Number two, Jesus was compassionate 
for the needs of others, whether it be physical or spiritual. Evangelism, I think, comes in our everyday activities. We let our common conversations lead to Christ Jesus. We let these common everyday occurrences at our jobs, on the golf course, at the mall, um, when we're at Chick-fil-A, um, when we're at the movies. No, 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 not while we're at the movies because you have to not talk at the movie theater. In each of these occurrences, he had the opportunity to share a piece of himself because Jesus is the gospel. Jesus shows them the gospel. He, he shows them what the gospel is. So I've got some questions for you. Number one, what do you think is the most effective way of evangelism? Do you think it's personal encounter stuff? Do you think it's discipleship? Do you think it's preaching? Do, do, do you think, you know, what are, what are the, you know, I know that, that, that we have various ways of doing things. I know that we, we accomplish things in different ways. What do you think the best way to evangelize people is? Number two, if you're not a Christian, if you don't go to church, if people come to your house, knock on the door and tell you about Jesus, what creeps you out about people sharing their faith with you. If, if you want to answer those questions, do it down below. Answer in the comments. And hey, you know, it, you know maybe we can figure some of this stuff out. Maybe we can try to understand and, and, and know what it is to evangelize and what it is to be a part uh, of, of the kingdom of God. Hit subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell everyone that you want to subscribe to Spooniac 66. You want to be a part of the conversation that we're having. You want to do this. Go. Please, subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Tell them to subscribe. Get their grandmothers to subscribe. I don't care. Just join the conversation. Help us figure some of these things out. Thanks for watching.